Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 19. Now, in uh, previous blogs, I've mentioned the uh, Rigol DS1052E oscilloscope and uh, what great value for money it is in the bottom range end of um, scopes and, and the excellent quality that Rigol have been able to build into these things for the price. And, well, I still think that's the case. But I've been alerted to an issue with this scope by uh, one of my blog viewers, uh, Y-Man. So thanks, Y-Man. Now, uh, Y-Man pointed me to a post on a um, ouravr.com forum uh, by a member there called Kid Dog, And um, he's actually taken apart his um, Rigol DS1052E. And he found some interesting things, which I, I couldn't let go. I've got a comment on this. It looks like Rigol have been uh, caught a bit with their pants down. As it turns out, it looks like they're, um, the ADC chips used in this DS1052E scope are being overclocked. Yes, they're actually overclocking these parts. They're actually uh, 40 meg sample per second parts. They use multiple ones, I'll explain that later, but they're 40, they're using the dash 40 meg sample per second parts, and they're running them, it looks like, uh, at 100 megahertz. So, go figure, Rigol are overclocking. Hmm, something sus here, let's investigate. Now, I'm not going to take uh, my Rigol scope apart because it's still got the uh, warranty void if removed sticker and, you know, it's, this is my own personal one, so I probably won't take it apart unless I get really desperate, but we've got some photos from uh, from the forum member Kit Dog, who's taken his apart. So let's examine these photos and see what's inside this little puppy and what's going on. Now, I was of the understanding that uh, Rigol actually um, had their own one gig sample per second uh, front end sampler. They actually developed it themselves, but that that doesn't look like it's the case. At least not in the DS. 1052E. Uh, now, if you take a look at this um, inside photo of the uh, main board, you can actually see that they use um, five um, analog devices um, AD9288-40 um, analog to digital converter chips. And uh, each one of those is a dual ADC, so that gives them a total of 10 um, ADCs for the uh, front end and obviously um, they're using these in a um, sequential uh, sampling mode to um, get their one gig samples per second. Now you can uh, tell just from the photos, you don't actually need the uh, circuit diagrams to actually um, see how this thing works. You can tell from the photos they've got uh, five of these chips, three on the top, two on the bottom, there's two ADCs per chip, that's a total of 10 analog to digital converters and so to get one gig sample per second, um, each one of those um, ADCs must run, obviously, at 100 meg samples per second, or 100 megahertz. And quite clearly, the uh, photo of um, this board shows that the, um, the chip is actually the Dash 40 part, the 40 megahertz version. Now it is possible uh, to actually get away with this uh, quite often because a lot of the um, uh, parts they make, they're, they're actually exactly the same die depending on the different speed version. And um, it's, it's likely, I, I don't know this for sure, but it's likely that the 100 megahertz die is exactly the same as the 40 megahertz die. If Rigol have done their own in-house testing on a, on a whole bunch of sample of these 40 megahertz parts and they they think they can get away with 100 megahertz. Well, obviously they can because the scope works. Um, so, you know, uh, if they've done their own thorough in-house testing, then it's, then it's probably not too bad. It's actually, it might even be quite smart to use a 40 megahertz part at 100 megahertz and save that money. And that's how they get the real low cost in these scopes. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's got dodgy written all over it. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't take care pre-prepared a uh, thing here of how I believe it's working actually inside. What they've got is uh, five of these AD9288-40 um, chips, which are actually running at 100 megahertz. They've got five of these devices, and inside each one is a dual ADC, two separate ADCs with their own uh, clocks. And um, these are clearly 
going into right next to it they're going into a um cyclone 3 fpga so um this is a you know it's a it's a low cost um sort of bottom of the bottom of the range fpga but it's got um five internal phase lock loops five pll's which can actually um be um you can actually set the phase output of these um in increments of 98 picoseconds so that's that's really remarkable um and obviously um i'll explain more of that later but um if you're running 10 um, adcs like this what you do is if you the clock line for each adc down here if you can see it they actually stagger the clock for each one so they've got the the clock for each adc one through to ten the, they're actually slightly staggered and to get one gig samples per second you stagger them at one nanosecond and if you drive them the analog input has to drive identically drive each adc input and that's fairly critical um it's you have to ensure that the analog signal arrives at each adc at precisely the same uh time for this uh system to actually work and um, inside the FPGA, they've obviously got the 8-bit data latches on the output of each analog to digital converter. And if you stagger the clocks at one nanosecond intervals um, and then store them in the internal RAM, that might be a bit tricky, actually, stagger, um, actually staggering the storage into the internal um, SRAM. That might be a bit uh, tricky, but they obviously figured out a way to do that somehow. And so this system can work. You can actually um, stagger clocks like this um but you have to be very careful your clocks have to be um spot on uh you can't have much uh, jitter because any jitter in the clock um signals manifest themselves in the sampling so then when you do your fft functions in your scope and things like that you can get errors in your in, in your signal and all it's not a it's not a huge deal in a low end um scope really so it's but uh, you do have to lot, put a lot of care into this system and uh, actually refining it and um, you know tweaking it just right so that the um, you get very low jitter and highly accurate one nanosecond spaced clocks on the output and Rigol have obviously able to uh, do this they've actually tweaked this system well enough so that it works and you know there's nothing inherently wrong with that now I've uh, I've actually contacted the uh, Rigol general manager about this, and um, I haven't got a response as yet. So it'll be very interesting to see if they actually respond on this issue, issue and if they've got anything to say about it. Um, I'd also like to know if it's um, common among scopes, or whether it was in an early uh, version, or whether or not um, current. So if you know, so if you've got one of these scopes and you want to open it and uh, verify, then um, that could be you know that'd be great let us know the other interesting thing is if you look at the photo of the ADCs um, it looks like they've tried to rub the numbers off and this is not uncommon um, for you know you sort of hide your trade secrets of how you actually design things and one of the common methods is to scrub the numbers off and that's what it looks like here I'm not entirely sure but um, you know that what looks like what's going on but they obviously didn't do it well enough on uh, this chip here which you can see and um, it clearly shows the dash 40 part and by you know uh, doing some simple math they simply must be running at 100 megahertz there's no other way to do it so looks like Rigol have been caught with their pants down I wonder what they have to say about it now you know my uh, opinion of Rigol is still still quite high I think they make some really good uh, low-cost gear the value for money is incredible and, and they do work quite well and they're high quality if you look at the um, some other internal photos the uh, the scope is um, actually uh, built and laid out very nice it's quite professional I, I I do actually like the layout of this of the board and everything it does look really well done a lot of thoughts gone into it it's certainly not a slap together um, cheapy and uh, which is not surprising considering that um, Agilent rebadge uh, these um, scopes as well. So obviously, you know, they've got to meet, you know, a fairly high standard for Agilent to do that. So Rigol still makes some quality gear, but caught with their pants down. How about that? Go figure. I'm sure we'll hear more about this. And if I uh, do get a reply from Rigol, I'll let you know.